today. Now my guest is Andy Lan with very interesting topic about navigating blockchain and cryptocurrency in the public sector. Andy, the stage is yours. Go ahead. Hey, hi. Good, good to see everyone. Um, it's uh, almost past midnight. I'm in Singapore right now. And um, my, my topic is um, somewhat on a more practical side of things. Um, I want to talk about how uh, how we should navigate uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency in the public sector. So a very quick brief intro introduction about myself. I'm Andy, Andy Lian. Uh, I'm uh, currently the advisory board member of uh, Hyundai DAC Technology, which is the uh, blockchain arm of the uh, Hyundai Moto Group. I'm also the uh, blockchain advisor to the Asian Productivity Organization and also a member of a uh, Kyongsang Book Blockchain Special Committee um, and is part of the government of uh, Republic of Korea. And I'm also a book author. So I, I'm trying to speak from ex, uh, my own ex, um, my own uh, ex, experience with um, with government and with the uh, public sector, and I'm going to give um, sound advice and also very practical advice on how we can navigate through this uh, this 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 unique sector. So uh, maybe a brief overview um, of of how we see blockchain right now. To me, blockchain currently is one of the finest piece of uh, art. Uh, when it comes to this this century, um, this technology is a decentralized ledger and is immutable with core functions like traceability and tracking. And like 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 all we know, you know, we are we we, we use it very much in the finance uh, sector. We see uh, quite a fair bit of uh, manufacturing sector supply chain that are implementing this technology. But if you look at it again, you know, not everyone welcomes us. So one reason why they didn't welcome us would be the other side of the um, uh, story where, you know, we talk about cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency has been uh, denounced by several governments uh, due to a number of reasons, you know, uh, and Bitcoin itself um, actually been banned uh, in some countries like uh, Nepal, like uh, Bangladesh and so forth. So some countries ha have made it very clear that they do not accept Bitcoin but they accept the blockchain technology. And some government even argue that Bitcoin is not a legal currency and should not be as such. I mean, well, you look at China and so forth, they, they, they are putting up the front uh, and this is the kind of message they are sending out. So coming back to the very practical point again, uh, uh, to, to, the, to the main topic is um, then how do we navigate, you know, in, in this sector, how do we talk to governments and so forth? So you have to look at what the government actually need, what they what they want and so forth. So first of all, I think the, due to my my, my own um, uh, work with a uh, different government, there are three three different sectors that uh, or three different good points that I want to bring out that the government can make make very good use of the technology. One would be food security. So if you are a vendor, you know. Or a technology provider, you know. Look, 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 look at look at this very big gap, you know, of uh, food security that you can provide to the different government. I, I know uh, South Korea, uh, even Dubai, they are really looking at the food security tracing, tracking, and so forth. Uh, that's that's the f first thing. The second, the key topic that uh, we can address when we meet up with the different governments would be the identification management. You know, like um, it could be used to uh, do some kind of uh, voting, you know, election is coming in US as well. Uh, that can be that can be used. Or if you, if you want to look at past use cases, you can see Estonia has already done that. So um, that is a very good and strong use case. And governments are really seriously uh, um, planning or if not already use that as a, a, a good case study to showcase to their fellow ministries and fellow departments. And of course, lastly, uh, the control and the flow of money. Uh, recent, recently, you can see that, um, um, you know, some very key topics like the uh, central bank digital currency, uh, how they, how, how they uh, are going to help uh, in, in, in the industry that we are in, um, so forth and so on again and then 
in 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 singapore especially for our M_A_S you know they are very much into into the control of the uh, money and they are they have spent a lot of time to build up the ecosystem for finance so in my opinion uh, blockchain technology not crypto is going to help the the flow of the money um so in, in my in my book, you know, um, titled uh, Blockchain Revolution 2030, we talk a fair bit about the future, and 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 I mean the book was uh, published last year, and I, I think it's still very much valid. Um, the the future of uh, blockchain technology and its potential adoption by the government um, has been seen very much uh, aligned with the content that we put forth in the book. Um, we we are starting to look at a new era of uh, transparency and efficiency. Um, we are looking at keeping record uh, in, in, a, in a more secure manner, public pro procurement, uh, land title registries, even grant disbursement. So th these are some of the um, some of the things that governments are really trying to do it. So how do we really navigate and, and talk to them? You know, how, how many people will just say that, oh, you know, government will just uh, call for a tender or ask you to go to their office. And most of the time they, they didn't get anything out of it. But but actually it's not true. Uh, governments are actively trying to learn from us how, how the whole blockchain technology is going to help them and going to help their businesses. Um, we, we, we have to start to know what, what the public service want, like I mentioned earlier in my in my presentation. So if you know what they want, and if you build according to what they want with a certain fair bit of innovation, you will then see the changes in terms of how the, 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 the different government uh, is going to welcome you. All right. So businesses must be ready, you know, before they speak to the government to sell their products uh, or, or to sell their solution. Because, um, for, for again, for the work that I've done, we have met up with a lot of uh, different solutions provider. Um, we call for a lot of uh, 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 projects to do the presentation. And of course, at the end, some of the projects are awarded to them. But I then want to emphasize that many of them are actually not ready. And if you are not ready, what's going to happen is that the government will have a perception that, hey, this whole industry is not ready, man. This whole industry are, are with people with just concepts and and it's not going to it's not going to fly so so we need to change that kind of um, perception that the government the, the different governments have uh, on us so going back to the very basic 101 when we set up the different business you know we have to market ourselves properly uh, we have to start to build the kind of trust and increase uh, credibility by of course you know by true by, by by getting yourself out in the door talk to media talk to different businesses um, try to get your credibility up because by doing that governments or or, or some of these public service uh, linked uh, quasi link uh, companies will then take you a lot more seriously and look at your solution in a slightly um, slightly different manner you know it's, it's not here to just sound you out but mainly there's a real project behind it um, of course the second thing that we have to do is to be to make sure that we are well backed by the technology you know we, we just don't go out and tell people that blockchain blockchain this and blockchain that and so forth we need to be very practical very very pragmatic to to tell them how this technology is going to fit into the solution or into the problem that they already have you know, blockchain might not be the only solution. We might be working with different vendors. We have might be working with different technology. So this would be a very good way to, uh, to, to speak to the government. Just be very practical and work with people that, that are credible as well. You know, because um, many of these uh, um, uh, blockchain companies, you know, they have very good tech uh, knowledge, but they may not have very good business knowledge and then from there they they, they sort of like uh, uh, employ consultants and, and uh, advisors and so forth to represent them but but my, my word of caution is that we have seen a lot of um, advisors most of them 
I mean they are they, they self proclaim that they are an expert but they have not really gone into the very practical uh, stage where they, they 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 operate a company or they really know what the whole blockchain business is all about um, they do not even know the pricing and some of the very in, in, intricate stuff that 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 forms this whole technology so you have to look for the right uh, advisors right consultant to make sure that your product is probably i mean is is, is well is, is is well represented so again i have to emphasize we got to be very practical and um when you talk to different government again you know we 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 did um i, I can't mention which government but we did try to uh, lobby we did try to put up different bills so that um, the, the government will look at uh, cryptocurrency in a, in a different manner but trust me many of the governments right now uh, do not uh, touch crypto and like I mentioned earlier they emphasize on the usage of the technology I think this is a very good start and, and let's not uh, push it too hard you know let's not um, you know push the, 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 the crypto agenda too hard because as we go along uh, with with the adoption of the blockchain technology, um, the government will start to understand uh, where we come from, and when they start to understand the industry a lot better, uh, they will make a lot better in, uh, informed decisions when they come to the the different cryptocurrency adoption, and 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 businesses should not be um, disheartened, you know, um, because you know the governments are not talking to me. Um, they they are just here to 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 get some ideas from me and so forth. I, I think this is again totally not true, because um, when 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 the government actually call you up, it actually meant that you have something that the government want. And many times, uh, some of some of these um, uh, tender guys or the solution provider uh, become friends, uh, and they, they they become part of the committee with some of the uh, sub subcommittee within the government sector to um, to influence and help the government I think that is that is a very good way of uh, maintaining a good con uh, connection and also um, some of the some of these uh, businesses uh, who are who, who are innovating and, and keep innovating uh, they, they will uh, be, be put on a list you know within within the government sector as a, a trusted provider and they will then introduce some of the state-owned uh, companies or the unicorns like what they say like oh this this xxx company is a unicorn and and they, they want this company to look at blockchain technology or cryptocurrency they will then make that kind of connections uh, for for you so it's, it's actually something that's going to be win-win and win you know for everybody so keep going and i think the navigation of the um of this space is not easy but it's not going to stop you so let, let, let me let me give a, a good example you know before I, I, I end my 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 slot uh, for this uh, this evening you know we we we, we constantly you know um, get ourselves in, in the in, in the space and talking to different people and eventually you know some of them become our own friends so one of the uh, state-owned company that that uh, I'm, I'm quite close with um, they started to think and uh, look at uh, DeFi solutions. Um, they are starting to look at how DeFi is going to change their their business model. They are, they, they are currently state owned, uh, quasi, uh, I, I would say state owned, and then they are a finance related company. So the the, the whole story is this, you know, their their board member uh, uh, want, wants to look at innovation, you know, but they they were told that you know DeFi is the next big thing that is in the market. And they, they they want to really know more about uh, what DeFi can do for them, you know, and for the group. Um, but as they go around asking people who do not really know about the industry, uh, they, they they have gathered a lot of negative points about uh, DeFi, you know. But but um, you know, being being close to to them, you know, I took I, I took the advantage as well to to speak to the chairperson. And I told him, why, why not we have a round table, you know, with your key personnel. Let me try and explain as much as possible uh, how the whole DeFi market is going to be like in the future and, and what you can do right now. So 
so so my 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 information to them is very straightforward because right now you know with the COVID nineteen everything is fairly bad. Um, many different companies are looking to uh, hatch their 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 existing cash, or they tr are trying to, uh, in other words, trying to retain their current value. So so I told them the whole situation. You know how how the money is is flowing uh, within the crypto market. You know from uh, you know going after the, the key Bitcoin, uh, putting their money into Ethereum, the next big thing that is uh, pushing the whole industry forward, you know, in the finance sector would be DeFi. Um, I also clarify that, you know, DeFi is not a, a, is not a ICO, you know, if, you, if they really want to put it, it would be ICO 3.0 or even 4.0, because everything else right now are fairly different from the ICO stage in 2017. Uh, long story short, um, the uh, state-owned company is is more convinced right now after having three different chats as of, as of today with them. They realize the value of DeFi, they understand the value of cryptocurrency. So right now, uh, they are actually looking at DeFi plus uh, DAO and plus OTC solution within the whole decentralized network. And I, I felt that this is a very big step moving forward. Um, and this would be also a very big step for them because they are institutions with good, uh, good cash flow, good money. And I do believe that they will then add good value to the whole industry that we are at right now. And like I said, they are quasi-link uh, government, state-owned. Um, this would then again uh, help us to create a good case study and good use case study uh, within the public sector and give the whole industry a lot more confidence. So, so with that, I, I'm going to end my, uh, my, my keynote speech for, for tonight. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Sergey, Julia for, for having me and also thank um, the different sponsors like uh, Invest Hong Kong uh, and so forth uh, to, to make this whole event uh, uh, live and running at, at this, uh, uh, this time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andy. Yes, uh, when we are going forward, Andy, I want to say you goodbye for now. Now we have another speakers in our room already. And please turn on your camera. And we are going to the next topic. The next topic is about the future of the